you are starting to learn abacus this tutorial is for you in this tutorial i'm going to solve a problem related to a truss trusses are used in buildings and bridges the key thing about trusses is that they only take tension or compression it means they take only axial forces this is the problem which i'm going to solve today the material properties are given member sizes are given these are steel rods five millimeter in diameter these are eight steps which I will follow to create the geometry and analyze the model and view the results. It's worth mentioning here that Abacus does not have any units at all. Please make sure that you use the consistent units. I'm going to use for this model SI units. Our first step is to create part or define geometry. Let us see how we can create part. Starting Abacus, I'm going to create this part and I will name it as frame. It's two dimensional deformable wire part. Approximate size is four. First, I'm going to create a rectangle. Once the rectangle is created, I'm going to delete these constraints, 90 degree constraints. And for this, press delete, click on constraints and press shift button to select these constraints. This will help me create the model. Then I'm going to define these two lines, horizontal lines as parallel lines. Click on add constraint, parallel, press shift and click on these two lines. These are parallel lines now. Then I'm going to define the dimensions. This dimension is two and the vertical dimension is one and this dimension is one. And again, I will define this dimension as one. I want to create a line from here to this point and this point. I'm going to split this member into two parts. So go to this section, click on split, click on this line and click on any of these two lines. This will split the member. I want to ensure that these two members are of equal length. Click on constraint, equal length, press shift, click on this line, click on this line. They are of equal length. Once I've done this, then I will click on done. The model has been created. The second step is defining materials. Click on material, say steel, go to mechanical properties, elastic or Young's modulus is 200 e power 9 and poison's ratio is 0 0.3 click ok the material has been defined our next part is to define and assign sections click on sections i will say frame section click on beam and then truss and here i have to define the cross-sectional area or i can simply write the formula when we have circular sections the formula for area is pi over 4 d square so simply write pi divided by 4 multiplied by 0 0.005 i'm converting it into meters double star is for power square this will work out the area of the section and if you Click on frame section again, area has been worked out. The next thing is to assign the section to the part. You click on part, click on section assignment, select this section and assign this frame section and click done. Next thing is to assemble the parts. Go to assembly, click on instances and I will simply click this frame instance. Step number five is defining steps and output requests. In the steps, I'm going to define a step, apply, load, and this step is going to be my linear perturbation step and static perturbation. Click continue, and here you can write 10 kN central load. And I'm going to keep everything as default. And output requests, uh, I will keep them as they are. I'm not going to change this. I will use the default ones. Step six is to define boundary conditions and loading. Click OK pin boundary condition and i would like it in initial one and click on this point pin means it cannot translate in horizontal vertical direction the next boundary condition is roller click this point and it cannot move in vertical direction next thing is to apply loading so click here and i would like to apply point load so i will say central point load concentrated force click ok Click on this point and I want to apply negative 10 kN. The unit is in newtons, so I will apply this loading over here. Step number seven is mesh creation and job definition. I will click on part and then I will click on mesh. First of all, I would like to choose the element. 
select the entire frame and here i'm going to choose the truss element i'm going to seed the part and approximate global size is one you can see these circles they appear over here another way of doing it is to seed the edges and you select all those edges you click done and here you select the edge by number so i would like a number of elements as one element because i've already defined the seeds this was alternative way to define seeds click cancel here and then i'm going to mesh the part okay to mesh part yes okay the next step is to define the job and i will simply say it as frame click okay i will keep in description modeling overhead hoist subjected to 10 kN central load okay all right at this point i'm going to save the model and i'm going to set the working directory and i'm going to save this model i will save this model as jq frame after the job has been defined then i will submit the job then i will monitor the results a clean solution right click on this and view results here you can see the deflected shape and here i have turned off the all stuff over here all legends i'm only viewing triad and legend and then you can have a look at stress you can click on allow multiple plots and you can plot deformed and undeformed shape superimpose plot here here i can change the color of ages style i can create this style apply and then i can change the color as well in that way you can plot deformed and undeformed shape and also i can see the results one misses the stress and if i wanted in common options i can change the scale factor to 10 which will give me a reasonable scale factor for the deformation if i say auto compute then it will have its own scale factor and then i can print the report as well so click on report go to field output stress so if you wanted you can plot stress and if you wanted you can plot a strain as well e11 and s11 these are axial stresses and axial strains in a step frame yes for all the steps click on setup and here uncheck this column totals and this will create a report for me i can have a look at results and here this report file has been printed click on notepad and then you can see s11 and e11 they have been given at each node in report click here unique nodal you can print displacements you can print the reactions as well apply okay if you open the abacus report again you will be able to see that the reactions and displacements are in the report now let us now rerun the analysis using abacus explicit now i want to apply loading suddenly to the model and see how does it behave first thing i want to do is that i want to replace this step replacing it with general and dynamic explicit here i want to say 10 kN load suddenly applied my time period is 0 0.01 seconds i will keep everything as it is and then i want to define the set as well i will say center click ok center set has been defined the next thing i want to change the mesh go to part go to mesh and element type click ok and here element library i will click on explicit click or write these elements have been defined in history output i will uncheck this and click on set center i would like to see displacements click on displacements and i want to see only translations click ok once everything is done then i will define another job i will say explicit frame click ok and here i will say 10 kN central point load suddenly applied and then submit the analysis the thing which i missed over here is that i had to define the density go to material without density it's not going to work click on density 7800 click ok resubmit the analysis the analysis is complete i will simply go to view results deflected shape here it's not showing me proper reflection and then i will make a scale to 20 if you wanted to slow down the animation click on animate options and then i will slow down the speed i will say play once only
And if you wanted to see the one misses a stress, you can view the stress. And if you wanted to see deformed and undeformed, you can see how it's deforming. The next thing I want to plot is the deflection. Click on results, history output. I want to see U2 displacement at center plot. And then you can see that displacement has been plotted and it looks pretty much similar to what you see in Abacus documentation. This example was taken from Abacus documentation and all the files are included in the link down below. If you click on view and ODP display options, then you can render these profiles and click OK. And scale factor, I will say 10. In that way, you can render these profiles. And if you want it, you can have a look at the stress contours. You can display element labels and you can display node numbers as well. View ODB output. I will remove the render. And then here you can see the node numbers and element numbers. Another important thing I wanted to cover is Abacus does not give you member loads. If you are solving this problem in any other software, you will be able to see their loads. But here, member loads are not computed directly. So a way around is stress is equal to force over area. When stress is given to you, you can multiply stress with area to work out the force. So here, when you are pulling this element down, it makes sense that three, six, four, seven, these elements will be in tension and two, one and five will be in compression. Compression is indicated by negative sign. Tension is indicated by positive signs. And these are the stresses in newtons per meter square. When you multiply this stress with the area of the section, you will be able to work out the load. And what is the area? These sections are five millimeter dia sections, simply pi over four d square. You multiply that area with the stress S11, you'll be able to get the force. You can copy this area as well. So if you go to frame section, it has this area 1.963 e raised minus 5. Thanks for watching this lecture today. I will see you in my next lecture.